Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will assemble the characteristics of the first dinosaurs and their direct ancestors living during the Triassic period. This new group of archosaurs exhibiting adaptations for a swift way of running, we'll call them the Ornithodira, which includes the pterosaurs, the flying reptiles, as well as the dinosaurs. There are a number of traits that unite pterosaurs and dinosaurs together, as well as some interesting animals living during the middle to late Triassic. The Ornithodira is a well-established clade, and recent discoveries have only strengthened this relationship. The oldest pterosaurs and dinosaurs are known from the latest Triassic, with the oldest pterosaurs known from the latest Triassic of Italy, while the oldest dinosaurs are known from South America and the American Southwest, with some newer discoveries in Africa. The Triassic pterosaurs and dinosaurs are united by many archosaur traits. The thecodon teeth, the anorbital and mandibular fenestra, and the more advanced AV metatarsali ankle joint, or crocodile reverse ankle. And most cladograms depict the two as sister groups. Now there are some really interesting fossils from the Middle Triassic that sit on these two clades that could be ancestral to both pterosaurs and dinosaurs. The first one we'll look at is the South American Middle Triassic fossil Lagerpeton. Now all we know of Lagerpeton is the hind limb and pelvis, but it showcases some really interesting features. The first is that the pelvis lacks an open acetabulum, so it's not a dinosaur. In fact, the pelvis resembles some of the early pterosaurs in having a dorsally lipped acetabulum, which is also found in bipedal curatarsians, and is also a fairly wide pelvis, which is unusual. However, it's considered a AV metatarsalian since its ankle features the crocodile reverse condition, in that the joint is across the astragalus and metatarsal bones. Without this ankle, the animal probably would have been placed within another group. Notice that the tibia is longer than the femur, which indicates that this animal was a specialized runner. Lagerpeton features a pelvis that compares with early pterosaurs, like Dimorphodon. It also features a fairly advanced ankle that would give it speed. A nimble new group of animals was born in this single fossil. Lagerpeton was not alone, as a series of early runners are known from the late Triassic, including the early Marasuchius, a bipedal creature that it has a slightly more advanced dinosaur-like hip, although the acetabulum is still not open. The pubis contains an operator foramen, which we'll see within the early dinosaurs. The animal does showcase a swift bipedal runner that makes it a really good model for the ancestor of dinosaurs. The tiny, strange fossil, Scutia muculus, from the Triassic of Scotland, has been advocated as an ancestor to pterosaurs, with its long tibia and elongated metatarsal bones. Although what we know of it comes from poorly preserved impressions and fragmentary skeletons from the lossy mouth sandstone. The animal was tiny, about the size of a small lizard, but featured long hind limbs with a long tibia and metatarsals, indicating either a hopping locomotive style or swift running. The skull was narrow and featured large orbits. Some authors have suggested that it was covered in protofeather fuzz or scales. The fossils are frustratingly poorly fossilized, and I wish we had better specimens of this fossil. Now, not all of the early Ornithodirians were 
bipedal. The fossil A. stereosaurus features a more elongated pubis and ischium bones, with the ilium lip still supporting the femur, and while very much like a dinosaur, it lacked the open acetabulum that defines the group. A highly fragmentary fossil named Nasiosaurus has been advocated as an early dinosaur relative from the earlier Middle Triassic of Africa, but we don't have many bones to support this position, with the evidence coming from the study of the histology of the bone more than its anatomy. These fossils likely formed a unique group of proto-dinosaurs called the Suriasauridae, with a few fossils from Poland and North America placed within this group, which includes U. coelophysis. This is a, a fossil that was originally thought to be an early dinosaur, but elements on its femur indicate that it might be placed within this new group of proto-dinosaurs. Now there are four really well-preserved early dinosaurs in the late Triassic, all of which are known from South America. The first dinosaur is Eodromius from the Ischiogalastio formation in Argentina, as well as Eoraptor, which is now regarded as an ancestor to the protosauropods, the long-necked dinosaurs, and the two large theropod carnivores, Herrerasaurus and Star Starachiosaurus from Brazil. Now all of these animals exhibit an open acetabulum and hence are true dinosaurs. There are small to medium or fairly big sized dinosaurs, which are bipedal swift runners. And they are the first of a long line of dinosaurs to evolve during the Mesozoic era. Dinosaurs are a rare element during the Carnian age near the end of the Triassic, but at some point around 220 million years ago, they rose in abundance and diversified from barely a percentage of the fauna to around 33% of the fossils found in the upper rock units during the late Norian age. By the end of the Triassic, 200 million years ago, both the pterosaurs and dinosaurs were on the rise, with fossils from North America, Europe, Africa, South America, and Asia. The last age of the Triassic period, the Rytian, was the first true age of the dinosaurs. All right, you should be able to assemble the characteristics of the first dinosaurs and their direct ancestors living during the Triassic. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin burgerorg Links are found in the description below.